Okay, so today I'm going to go ahead and show y'all how to securely erase drives using Linux while using the dd or shred command. So, if it's something like this, SAS 2.5 inch thick hard drive or just a regular SATA 2.5 inch thin profile drive, or if you want to do USBs, you can do those too. Or just about anything else that gets reg registered in the dev tree that y'all want to delete. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me go ahead and switch over here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with this USB. Just to give y'all an example. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and insert to my workstation down there. Let me get that camera over there so y'all can see. I don't really know why I'm giving all video of this. I guess it's just something. Uh... See, that's bad. There's our USB in there. Jesus. Okay, alright. So I'm going to pull this USB out. Since this was the one I was trying to show y'all, we're, we're doing this one. This one right here. This one. Well, let me get over there. Okay, can you see it? Okay, this one. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the USB slot right there. <clears throat> it's in. Let's scroll back up here. Zoom out for y'all. Oh, well, well, well. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and open up terminal here. So, terminal is open. I'm going to go ahead and do a sudo fdis dash dash list enter. I'm going to go ahead and go down, scroll down here. As you see, the USB device I just inserted under the dev tree is called SDE, so slash dev SD. So that's the device name we're going to be using to issue commands to. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out for y'all so that banner doesn't get in the way. So we're going to start with the shred command and a basic breakdown of what it does. So by default, at least as of today's date, which would be right there. The shred command does a default of three passes with random data. So that's a little overkill, and when you're working with SSDs or flash devices, you're not going to want to do too many iterations or too many passes. For The simple fact is it wears down the memory when you start doing a lot of passes, especially when you're not working with enterprise class hardware. It does put a lot of wear and strain on the drive. So we're going to keep it down to two pass minimum. What I recommend doing is doing a one pass random followed by a one pass zero. Now when you do a one pass random when you do a one pass random that's confirming all the data is gone then you do the one pass zero. Uh, generally for a lot of devices writing back over uh, blocks and sectors that are zeroed out can help you with write speed. Especially SSDs which for SSDs would be called trimming. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and type in shred, then dash n for iterations, space 1. That's saying we want to do a one pass of random. And then we're going to go ahead and type in dash 0. So after that one pass of random is finished, then it's going to zero out the drive with zeros. We're, then we're going to type the device that we want to issue that command to. So it'll be forward slash dev, forward slash sde. And you're going to want to confirm that that's in fact the drive because if you nuke your OS, you're probably not going to be in a good mood, especially if you don't have anything backed up like family pictures or stuff you do with your girlfriend or anything like that. So shred dash n one dash z uh, forward slash dev forward slash SDE. I confirmed SDE is in fact the USB drive. I want to go ahead and delete some and go ahead and enter. Luckily for me, I forgot sudo, so I'm going to go back space sudo enter <clears throat> obviously you need permissions and you're in a command like this a lot of times I play in the root as root so sometimes I forget to do sudo which is generally not a good idea but okay so you can go ahead and wait for it and it'll just 
reprompt on your terminal when it's done. So I'm going to control C it to kill it and go ahead and clear it out. And if y'all want to see some other command line switches, I'll do shred dash dash help. As you can see, uh, dash F is for force. You're usually never going to have to use that. Uh, dash N is for the iterations I was telling you about. The size, you can pretty much thought, hey, I only want to do this much. Uh, verbose, that will show you progress. So let's go ahead and give it another run with verbose so I can see how that looks like. Go ahead and go back here, add dash V, enter. There you go. See, right now what it's saying is it's one of two passes, and then it just updates slowly. Okay, and on to DD now. So, in order to shred a drive or disk, or whatever you want to do in the dev tree, as long as you have read and write permissions to it, we'll show you how to do that with DD now. Uh, what you're going to do is type DD, and then IF for input file. You can either input files or devices or a lot of other stuff. Uh, equals forward slash dev forward slash. We're going to do an example with U random. So U random. Now I believe this is getting random data from the CPU. I'm not 100% sure. If that is the case, though, this is an extremely secure method. And then we're going to go ahead and do OF for output file. So DDIF for input file, dev, we're inputting the U random, which means random data, and then output file OF equals slash dev slash SDE. And then we're going to set a block size, BS equals 64K. The reason we're setting a block size is because uh, the default for DT, uh, the default for DD is so low that it does affect write speed. So when you change the blocks, uh, so when you change the block size to something higher, it speeds up the process. And then we're going to do status equals progress because we want to see the progress. And then we're going to go ahead and press enter here. And again, I forgot sudo. Okay, back sudo, enter. Okay, so as you can see, it's saying it's trans, it's uh, putting random data onto that device at 220 megabytes a second. Now I can tell you that's not true, and that's because the kernel isn't syncing the correct write speed with the device, and in fact the kernel is ahead of the actual device. So, and I'll give you an example here. So if you go down and you look at my USB here, and see, I, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing tutorials. I'm kind of breaking stuff down as I go. So, because a lot of times people will run and encounter these issues and they wonder why they happen or they're not sure. Well, I'll explain to you why it happens here. So you see that light's blinking, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do a Control C now on DD. As you see, it's not canceling out right away, and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with Linux. There's nothing wrong at all. Uh, the reason it's not canceling out is right now it's waiting for the device to catch up to the kernel. So it's saying that it's already written 11 gigabytes of random data of that flash drive. There is no way in hell. So what's happening is that flash drive is blinking away and it's catching up to the kernel saying, hey, let me make sure this 11 gigs is finished. And then that control C will go through on the kernel. Now, depending on what kernel you're using, it might be different. It might actually force cancel. It might still be right in there. I'm not 100% sure, but in most of the cases, this is how it's going to act, and that's normal. There's nothing wrong. So I don't got time to wait for it to 11 gigs, so I'm going to pull that out. As you can see, it canceled out now. Now I'm going to put it back in. Now, that's normal, so whenever you issue the command and it finishes, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to actually check that USB device or whatever device you got. Make sure the activity light is blinking to confirm the command that you've executed is actually finished. There's a way to prevent that. So I'm going to go ahead and push the up arrow, and I can type in off lag equals sync. And what this is going to do is it's just going to make sure it's syncing correctly. Uh, sometimes this will affect your write speed. Uh, more or less, and for the most part, the, which is the reason I don't use it, I just check the activity light. But if you want to make sure, if you're doing like, well, if you're doing a really important operation and you want to make sure that 
it's in sync, do off lag equals sync. So I'm going to go ahead and push enter. And as you can see, it's only saying it's going about 30 megabytes a second. Well, 40 now, somewhere around there. Now it's going closer to a USB 3.0 micro center drive speed. So it's not going to full 3.0 speed, nowhere near close, but that's because it's a micro center 3.0 drive. It's not actually a 3.0 drive. It's just using 3.0 interface. Anyway, so y'all get the idea. So now, as you can see, now if I do control C, you see how it exited out right away? That's because the device right is now in proper sync with the kernel. So if you want to know what off lag sync does, there's an idea. It might have a little more detail or that might be not 100% roughly in how you define it, but that's just to give you an idea. So now let's say you want to do this, but you want to zero it with DD and not issue random data and wipe it with random data. So you can go ahead and type in zero, enter. Now you're doing, I'm just going to control C, that's not right. Now you're doing zero, you're zeroing it out with zero data. So I hope that breaks down for y'all and gives y'all an idea of how sh the shred and dd command works. You can also use dd clone drives. Uh, I will do a tutorial for y'all uh, with using dd to clone drives, which I think is one of the best, if not the best ways to clone drives because it's just doing device to device and it works great. And sometimes it can be a little tricky if you're working with uh, drives that are not the same size, maybe you have to shrink a partition or increase a partition. I'll be doing a tutorial on that too. So let me go ahead and get my camera set up here so y'all can see what's going on. So anyway, I hope this gives y'all an idea of, like I said, shred in the DD command, uh, but more or less, I'm trying to get this YouTube channel started to financially support myself so I and try to grow this something bigger. I've spent the last five years working on my website, setting up an NGIX server, uh, deploying actual physical hardware, as you can see here. So this is my server rack I have in my apartment. There's my temperature over there inside the rack. Um, and so this has been a long process for me. This has been something I've been building over the years. And I've been planning to deploy a YouTube channel for a while now. And the reason why is because I think I can help people with some of this stuff, make y'all's life easier in both a production level environment, or if you're just an enthusiast level computer user and you like diving into servers and play with enterprise enterprise class equipment like I do, then maybe I can help you out. And if I do help you out and make some of y'all's life or work easier, please, you know, feel free to support the channel. Uh, I'm going to be putting stuff, more stuff up on GitHub for y'all. I'll be doing tutorials on i3. And, uh, you know, if there's anything that y'all want done, uh, especially if you support the channel, I will give y'all priority and I'll do a tutorial on that. And hopefully I can help y'all out and you can help me out and we can grow this channel into something big where, you know, if I need help, I can ask y'all for help on how to do something or vice versa. So hopefully we can go ahead and do that together and we can grow this into something cool. So if you like the channel, like and subscribe, the bell icon whenever you see a new video or whatever, you know. All right, guys, I'm out. Take it easy.